In this video, I'm going to give you a simple guide into churning, which is a way uh, to protect yourself from poison outputs. Now, there really is not an exact science here, but the process is actually pretty straightforward, and it is important to know for individuals who do have heightened OPSEC, mostly because if you do have poison outputs attached to your identity, if you spend multiple poison outputs at the same time especially, this can, with a decent degree of probability, reveal who you are. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a scenario, and we're going to show you what you should do in this situation. So let's say you've made four separate XMR withdrawals uh, from a KYC exchange to a wallet that you own. So KYC stands for Know Your Customer. These are uh, centralized exchanges that you give all your information to. Uh, however, uh, you are concerned about chain analysis after learning about ring signature weaknesses and attack of the poison outputs. So what can be done about the funds in your wallet and what can be done going forward? So to solve this, we are going to churn. And churning is essentially the process of consolidating all of your spends into one output. Uh, in the CLI, this is done with a sweep all command. And in the GUI, you just select uh, all funds. I I'll show you uh, what that looks like uh, later on. And the main reason you're doing this is to eliminate the co-spend heuristic. And so I'm going to show you what that looks like. And by eliminating this heuristic, um, you're really throwing a wrench into any type of probabilistic analysis. Now, this is not an exact science again. Um, however, um, the co-spend heuristic is pretty damning. And uh, I'm going to show you what that looks like right now. All right, so I got my uh, wallet opened here. And I'm going to type in incoming transfers verbose. And so as we see here, we have four different transactions that I have received. And we are given um, some extra information here. We have the transaction ID, the uh, pub key, and the key image. And for this, really, the two things that we're going to be looking at are the transaction ID and the pub key for each transaction. So I'm gonna actually pull up the transaction uh, for this first withdrawal that we made of one Monero. And so yeah, this is just a transaction on the blockchain showing that we received one Monero. But um, the important thing to look at though is the stealth addresses because we received one of these stealth addresses. And sure enough, if I go back into my wallet, so yeah, the, the pub key here, this 0CFA10, if we go back to the block explorer, this is going to be one of the stealth addresses, as you can see, as you can see right here. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is because this stealth address or this pub key is actually the poison output. And later on, when you send a ring signature, this is what's going to appear in the ring signature. A uh, ring signature is just made up of stealth addresses that have appeared on the block explorer previously. And your wallet basically finds random stealth addresses and composes your ring signature out of them. Uh, the co-spend heuristic is when you have multiple ring signatures with poison outputs. And when you do a sweep all, it's going to consolidate all of those ring signatures at once. So back in my wallet here, uh, we see here that there are four transactions. So what we're going to have is we're going to have four ring signatures because we're sending four Monero unspent outputs. And each of those unspent outputs needs a ring signature. And each of those ring signatures is going to contain one of these pub keys inside of it. Okay. And I'm going to show you that right now. So I'm going to get my address. I'm going to say sweep all here. Type in my password. I'm going to say yes. And there we have it we have this new transaction ID. So now I'm gonna go back to the block explorer and type in this new transaction ID. And like I said before, we have four ring signatures, right? Because each of those unspent outputs needs a ring signature. And what we can now do is we can actually look at the different um, poison outputs. Right, so for example here, um, this is kind of hard to read, but You'll see, boom, it just popped up. That is the poison output. 
We'll do this one. Search for it. Boom. This popped up. We'll check this one out. This one popped up too. Uh, and that one popped up. Now the problem with the co-spend heuristic, again, is that you have four ring signatures and each of those ring signatures contains a poison output tied to your KYC identity. So therefore, a chain analysis company, they have a database of all the poison outputs that are sent out by KYC exchanges. So they're going to look at this transaction. They're going to say, there's a very, very good chance that we just sent Monero. And they can do that by just looking at these ring signatures with each of them containing a poison output. So back in my wallet, we see that we have eight blocks left until we can um, unlock this new balance. And this new balance, again, is just in uh, one of these two stealth addresses, which I can actually see. So actually, hold on. Let me... So this 82646, so this 82646, this is the stealth address that, that, that we received. Uh, this is actually a dummy stealth address. Um, this is just fake. Uh, the reason being is uh, a chain analysis company would be able to determine that we did a sweep all because there'd only be one stealth address. Otherwise, a chain analysis company will have no idea and they, they could assume that this is a um, change output. So if I sent uh, less than or equal to my total amount, the total amount of funds would get sent to that person and the amount remaining would get sent back to me. That's essentially how you know, cryptocurrency works when you're sending it. In this case, though, this doesn't actually exist and this is the real uh, um, poison output. Uh, of course, um, chain analysis, so from the perspective of chain analysis, they're going to look at this transaction. They're going to say, okay, we know that there's a high probability that this person sent Monero, that we have their KYC identity tied to it. So then they're going to mark down these two stealth addresses. And that's pretty much all they can do. Um, they don't know the exact amount we sent. They don't know who we sent this Monero to. But they know that one of these could be tied to us. Now, if you're churning, there's multiple things that you can do from here. You know, one thing you can do is you can continue to churn, which is what I'm going to show you. You can just send the funds to yourself again. Um, and the difference here, though, is that that ring signature that you're, that's going to appear, there's only going to be one of them because we just consolidated all of our outputs into one ring signature, right? Right. So these are all the funds that I swept, and I swept it into this consolidated output. And when I send the ring signature, um, you know, this the um, poison output for this uh, output is going to appear in the ring signature, but they're only gonna have one ring signature. So a chain analysis company, they're not gonna have that co-spend heuristic, and that is the problem for chain analysis. So the recommended churning process that I put forward to you is as follows. Uh, one, don't use KYC. I mean, really, <laughs> this kind of eliminates the need for even churning to begin with, but don't use KYC. If you use KYC, these attacks can be done against you. Um, the second thing I would say is, you know, once a week, maybe once every couple of days, you're going to want to do uh, the churn. Um, now, you can do a sweep wall or you can use the GUI wallet as well. Or actually, you can use pretty much all the wallets as far as I understand it. Uh, I'll show you the GUI in a sec. One thing, though, that I didn't talk about is you don't want to churn funds that are recent. You know, in this example, I'm waiting for the block limit to clear and then I'm going to churn again. But um, the, the reason this is not good is because the decoy selection al algorithm is skewed towards a recent um, spends. So if you're churning immediately after, it, you're, you're kind of making it more likely it's you. It's not an exact science, but this is what I've been told. So it's better to wait a little while. Now, how long should you wait? This is, again, there's no definitive proof of what you should or shouldn't do. I would say consensus is wait at least a couple of days or a week and then just churn your funds. Another thing, use Tor and run your own node. That's just good practice anyway. And um, you want to have a KYC wallet separate from a non-KYC wallet. I think the reason here is it just makes it like 
more difficult to manage. You can use, uh, you can um, actually freeze outputs, which I didn't show you guys, um, mostly because like, I think it's just like a little too much work. But um, in Feather, you can actually do this with a GUI, but you can actually freeze outputs. So if you receive a some Monero from a KYC exchange, you can actually prevent that Monero from being sent out specifically. So if it's a poison output in your wallet, you can prevent that from being sent out. Um, but yeah, you have plausible deniability at the end of the day. And as we have seen historically, this attack really isn't, it's hard to prove. There was a PowerPoint that came out with Chainalysis where they were using the co-spend heuristic, but they were also using nodes metadata as well. So IP addresses. Uh, and this just made their case more damning. Now, could they have just used the co-spend heuristic? Yes. Would that be enough to prove that someone spent the funds? I'm not so sure about that. And this is where it gets very tricky because like, I can't really definitively say yes or no because there really are no cases that I can point to as a precedent for this. So, but what's weird though is like a transaction graph can still be made. And even though the probability is like very buried and like not definitive, the chain analysis company could say that they know that you had sent your funds previously and the, the output from the transaction ID that we had after we did the initial sweep all that can be linked to us. Um, and that's just because of this co-spend heuristic that was so damning in the first place and because we use KYC. So I'm going to show you that right now. All right, I'm back in my wallet. So again, we are going to do a sweep all. Now, um, while we're waiting for the um, output to get sent to us, um, because um, we're waiting for block to go through, let me just show you the GUI real quick. And what you would do is put your address here. Um, and then for the amount, you would click on this button and it sends all the unlocked funds to your account. And that's basically a churn. So yeah, now we have this new um, pub key that we received. And there it is, right? Right here. So, you know, again, this was the spend in the last one when we consolidated the outputs. And we can actually just find that in here, this 82646 right here. So a chain analysis company, they would take this stealth address from the consolidated sweep all we initially did. And they would know that there's a good, a very strong probability one of these stealth addresses is us. So they're keeping tabs on both of them. And later on, they're going to see this ring signature. And well, there, there is one of the spends inside this one. Maybe that's the real one. We don't know. A chain analysis company won't know for sure. But they can then mark this down as being a possible spend related to the same person. And then they can mark these two stealth addresses down. Now we know this is the real one because I just showed you, but later on, so later on, they can now mark these two down um, amongst all the other um, possible candidate transactions as well. And this is where it gets really messy because like, you know, let's say that we only did one churn and then later on I do, uh, I send my Monero to a KYC exchange. If this Output here. If this appears in my ring signature, is that proof that I'm there? You can tie my transaction to this churn that we made. Would that be enough proof, or would you have plausible deniability? Um, there's really no correct answer here. Um, I think it would depend on the government and whatever faulty chain analysis they're doing. Um, the the positive note is again, we haven't really seen you know, chain analysis companies using this successfully, um, at least from what we've been made aware of um, from court cases. Uh, however, you know, if Monero doesn't improve, eventually you're going to have people thrown in jail for, you know, transactions they didn't commit. Of course, it would be based on faulty chain analysis, but that doesn't really matter. I mean, we've already seen this with Bitcoin, right? Uh, so obviously that's not good. And, uh, you know, I, I would say one more thing is like, don't overthink this. The worst thing you can do is tie yourself to, to a KYC exchange if you are going about using Monero in a high-end OPSEC environment. 
that's the best advice I can give you. It's it's the most the simplest thing you can do. So check out Haveno and Bisc uh, or other you know peer to peer options of acquiring Monero because in doing so you really eliminate a lot of the ways that metadata can be aggregated against you. Poison outputs are just one of the many different ways that someone's identity can be tied to a transaction. Of course, you have IP addresses, the timing analysis, etc. But this is indeed one way. And um, you know, with Ospeed, what Rucknium is saying too is that so, for example, in this second transaction that we sent, we have 16 ring members, but he's saying that he can pick the the correct ring member 23.5% of the time. So perhaps that can be used in conjunction with, you know, basic uh, transaction graph and following that, like we just did right here, where we're following this going from point A to point B, right? Um, maybe they can be used together. Maybe you can also use timing analysis with that and the amount that you're sending, et cetera. So yeah, it's very hard to summarize this. I think I did a pretty good job though, right? So if you like the content, feel free to show me a donation. And uh, I think I've spent enough time talking about churning. <laughs> no more. No more churning. Uh, but anyways, uh, I'm going to be heading out now. So thanks for watching.